No, no, it isn't funny. Don't laugh! Jump game! What is Shonen Jump about? Right, effort, friendship, and victory. It's the motto. It's why even when Nobuhiro Watsuki, Rurouni Kenshin's mangaka, got charged for that, all his buddies came out to show support for the guy. Because it's about victory. About all your friends making a Herculean effort with the mental gymnastics required to defend that. <laughs> Oh dear god. Now a publication as big as Jump is bound to inspire, or uh, spawn, a lot of anime fighter schlock. And okay, it's not just fighters, right? We've got Phone Game, and the Japan-only Shonen Biographies Collection. It's just a collection of Famicom games. And the weird crossover RPG. Hard to believe, but I actually don't want to punch Pixel Slimes with Goku. So fighters it is. Like I said, years ago, shooting giant laser beams is awesome. But could you dial it back? Perfect. Gotta respect the elders. Okay, let me learn you some sh Whoa! Jump Stars, or specifically Jump Ultimate Stars on the Nintendo DS, is more accomplished than you. And that's it. You're done, son. Game's a legend, and you know it's true because it never reached America, but here we are with a fan-made English patch. Incredible. Yeah, it's a little choppy. Yes, the animations are jerky and weird, and sometimes you can hardly tell what's going on. But they really said, you like that character? Not a problem, my good man. Dang, they put printed tennis in this bit. For people with only an emulator and a dream, or a DS and an R4 card, Jump Ultimate Stars was Jump Games, the Jump crossover, and it was sick. They got Yo Asakura, okay? Top that other Jump Games, you can't. His series did a weird hiatus thing and fell off. Like, think of an important character from any Jump property. They're probably here. Things I've never seen are here. Sure, it's not everyone, but hey, Better than Mugen! But is it though? How's the gameplay? Eh, uh, serviceable for a DS fighter. There's minimal physics, fighters interact in primitive ways, the AI is something. Oh, we dying. More than two fighters on screen turns the arena into a big pile of Yippee! I don't even want to hear the word tier list. And you might even have trouble just getting back on the ledge. <sighs> Okay. The game's packed with modes, mind you. That was the real strength. I mean, you're playing on this, okay? It's not an arcade cabinet. Cut it some slack. You got story mode, you got tourney mode, you got verses, but none of those matter. The point is playing through them for the characters. All of them. And going to deck building or panel placing mode and making your own teams with your choice of power-ups. You'd unlock these panels of increasing size and slot them into the pseudo manga page layout. You know, you could put Yo on the same page as Gintoki. You could pair Yugi Moto with Jotaro. Why not? So you could distract yourself with a slew of familiar faces and even some new ones from all the stupid crap a small people put up with. Oh wow, I really blew that stock. <laughs> Even today, it's fun to look back at as a piece of history. Shonen Jump marches on, and this game's a time capsule of things once popular. Names, faces, fading away with time. And to be honest, for what it is, it might be the best of the lot. That's right, only going downhill from here, folks. Battle Stadium, D-O-N. Get it? Like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Naruto. <laughs> That's a clever boy right there. Why am I gendering titles? Also, what the f- yeah. This is 2006? Where's Bleach? You're gonna make a game at the height of the whole Jump Big 3 thing, only feature three IPs, and have Dragon Ball Cuck Bleach? Shut up! Toriyama's work had its thousand days in the shade. Let someone else in, like, come on! Also, man, I don't like Goku smirking the same synthetic way through every shot. Now this game's Japan only because Western kids in 2006 hate Shonen Jump and Smash Bros, obviously, and it's a little surprising. If you pick the right character, you know, regardless of how janky this whole thing feels, you can have a decent time. Kind of like Blade Charge and Kingdom Hearts, a game with Final Flash is good in one small way, but holy god it's janky. Now it might be my Sony personal computer acting up, you know, but it's hard to just maneuver adequately without flying halfway across the stage. I had to play like a monk to move. It's actually really similar to Digimon Rumble Arena, questionable mechanics, some dudes running around on platforms with terrible, terrible hitboxes, 
mostly, and collecting orbs to power up, to KO opponents. It's a very simple spin on the Smash concept. Like in that game, your attacks basically compound, so multiple successive attacks will inevitably KO someone. But here, you need to attack to unlock the ability to KO in one big swing. Now, there's a lot to do, the same few ways, and lots of characters to unlock. I just can't imagine anyone playing it longer than a couple hours these days. Ooh, is that why it didn't come to the West? They put a gamble in? Get him while they're young! Okay, that's not fair. What's really fascinating is most of the characters do what you'd expect. Luffy, Goku, whatever, all normal, but Sakura here inexplicably has stand powers? Like, they could just give her attacks, punches and kicks, shuriken, or whatever, but no. They loaded her up, her special moves, with JoJo stand attacks. I mean- Okay, we're past the chaff. Anime fighters kinda suck. Sure, even if they're pushing the right buttons. But now we're getting into the real games. The modern consoles with their HDMI ports and dev teams vaguely aware of fighting game mechanics, at least in theory. So let me get that sh- Hello! I want a modern jump game! Let's go! Oh dear. J-Star's Victory Versus. Damn, with a name like that, you know it's good. One does not invoke the ancients lightly. It's hard to know what to expect from these games as a reviewer. In one way, you know, I've seen some shows, I've played some real average stuff. So the game only has to do a couple of things well. Provide a few cool characters, you know, like revolutionary burn victim person, or that guy from the PP anime. And have some cool moves, you know, give the player a show. <laughs> On the other hand, Defining moments in Sasuke's career, getting beat up by a farting baby. Sometimes you put a weird farting man baby in your anime game. Sometimes you don't include Shaman King and put Bobo Bo in. Jump games where the roster's made up and the shows don't matter. These games are weird, specifically this era of anime games. They get close to mimicking what every fighter needs to succeed, but always miss the mark. Just enough that it's totally embarrassing for everyone involved. I'll give you an example. Do, put guarding, dashing, fairy detachment, and utility moves, special moves, maybe even comeback mechanics if they're not totally busted or one-sided. Don't. Make jumping have a 30 frame startup delay. Maybe don't make attacks and even basic jumps suffer from more end lag than any of Ganondorf's moves. I'm serious, this game feels like mud. Actually wading through mud. You tried that sh- Woo! That'll be 90 smackers, but there's some dumb fun for some sick bastard. Look, I've been there, done that. Story modes to unlock the giant rosters, customize your trading card deck, absolutely not. It's nothing new or interesting by the numbers. Even its inclusions feel dated. Granted, I'm not up and up on my shonen history, but really, dude, Toriko? Did that series even happen? What? Dude, it ran for eight years? Is color theory just an art college scam? Shut up, Goku. I'm the next great shonen protagonist. <laughs> Can you even imagine? I can't be too mean. Without Toriko, we wouldn't have this funny stage. <laughs> Cut the tomato. Cut the watermelon. Pikmin never looked so ugly. But for real, translating the wackiness of Shonen Jump's concepts into video game format is the real draw for these games. You can't chop a giant fruit in most games. And I know it sounds silly, but those are the moments. I got into versus mode with Gintoki, longtime Gintama watcher here, and immediately noticed his dash let him ride his scooter, and it was fun. Ah, oh, this is so sick. And he was totally decked out with references to the show, like throwing the just away bombs, doing the old came haim ha, that's... It's cool. What the developers add to the game and do with the characters can add a lot of charm to something that really sucks otherwise. It can pump you up in totally unexpected ways. Yeah, good, dropkick that jumpsuit into the stratosphere. Buddy, bolas are for children. Get a gun, you goofy fu- Oh, he did. I love this, you can just be playing and bam, through the wall. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, yes. Put Ryotsu in the game. HQ, we got a petty criminal leaving the site on foot. I'm gonna need the rocket launcher. HQ, we've got a protagonist that almost looks their age. Permission to use excessive force. Shut up. <laughs> Someone stop me. I've grown too powerful. Oh, nice jump, Naruto, but that's punishable. <laughs> yeah, I had fun. A little. Not sure why. So this is the one we were waiting for, yeah? No, let's be serious and deliberate and analytical. Uh, what? 
the hell were they thinking? Jump Force is a special kind of disappointing to me for a few reasons. One, I'm terminally accepting of bad games. I can actually have fun in them, even if it's only for a day. Two, Jump Force was a chance for this collection of characters to get a really decent 3D brawler. Maybe even incorporate popular knowledge from the competitive fighter boom and really strive to become a great game. Three, some parts of the game are good. And I know you're thinking, shut up, K-Bash. You're just jerking it to Final Flash again. And yes. I am. <laughs> the end product is a total mess, in almost every way. Yeah, tons of channels of all kinds of gameplay, even makes the game look good sometimes. And I bet it is. If you can tolerate the systems and do the combos and put in the time, I'm sure it's great. But, uh, yeah, it's no secret the performance is variable on console anyway. But that's just a really annoying static problem, you know, you're gonna have to deal because you already spent the money. So let's talk about the content. The game cares a lot more about the story mode than some of the other games, actually incorporating full cutscenes between contrived battles. You'll notice the crispy visuals. Real crispy. Burnt toast looking visuals. Don't say it! Okay, I can't pretend. What the f*** is wrong with whoever decided cell shading is bad? Cell shading looks great. Cell shading survives console generations. Cell shading can cover ugly. This hyper-realistic thing, though? Like, I get it. We're bringing Shonen Jump to the West in a real Marvel movie cinematic way. But the grit is so disgusting. These characters weren't created for this kind of setting. They look awful. Like someone dropped their pudding on wet concrete. It's even dumber that the visuals are screaming serious cinematic experience and the characters pull up like, Time to drop a stupid catchphrase! Yeah, now I'm feeling the vibe. This is vibe, right? <laughs> okay, enough dicking around. The story is simple. Goku's a bad hero, so he lets a random civilian die to freeze his laser beam. But the civilian is you. Now Trunks is here to revive you. Now make you. I put exactly five minutes more into this than I should have. After excruciating reconstruction surgery, Glover from Glover tells you to join Team Alpha, Beta, or Gamma. So what team are we gonna pick? Right. Beta, because we paid money for this game. Now you could do a bunch of missions and level up and play the game or something, or you could be a total sociopath and just play free computer battles to show off the characters. Good, anything is better than spending time in this barren online wasteland of devoted anime people. Right, screw it, let's play good point, bad point. Good point, shoot the kid, mercilessly. <laughs> Wow. Bad point. Those bodies sure do recover like seizing stroke victims. Good point. United States is Smash. All Might is really cool. Bad point. He's DLC. Good point. This frog. Bad point. Interesting hitboxes. Whew, this is hard. Tiebreaker round. Good point. Dancing. Bad point. Ooh, look at me. I'm my original fan character, Blickolo. <laughs> This is impossible. I know somewhere, there's something good here. I just don't want to bother. If I'm playing competitive, I'm playing a competitive fighter, or the one with monetary support, yeah? The best this game has is proving Jotaro can kick Goku's ass, but we already knew that. Am I right, anime fans? I like this gun character from this series takes a real chad to walk into a crowd of beam slingers and ninjutsu and hypersonic speed and then just pull out your pistol and shoot them fucking dead. You know, whip out the old 12 gauge, double fist your rocket launchers. I'm starting to think this game is cool. <laughs> Look, I know Jump Force has its fans and I want to be genuinely, but it's just not good enough. From mechanics to performance to the endless DLC and price gouging, to be fair to the game, the one thing they really nailed was big finisher moves. Every single one feels like this event that stops the game, but they're animated so well with a lot of attention to angles, starts and stops, dynamic poses, effects. Landing your finisher feels like an absolute triumph every single time. And even when they the game can't live up to the hype or the market expectations. It's still got that flicker of youthful dreams and I can't hate that. Yo, they really put my man in a big banana peel and said good. What the f- But really, uh, don't buy these unless they're on sale. I'll kill ya! <laughs> Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good, thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons, who are... 1307 Andy Blarg Azero Basement Dweller Beverage Crisp Boha Brandon Brios Cal Caesar T Chief Cordant Chris A. Cody Golden. Corgi the Lad. Couch Moba. CW Glassworks. Kyle Lapreed. 
Daddy Dagoth, Dakota Storm Jones, Dara, David Castillo, Demon, Den Het, Don't Worry About It, Dylan Coffee, Annex, Exa, Frankenstitch, Glyph Seeker, Guard Cory, Gucci Plant, Hatsune Miku's Crack House, Harkaj, Heeman Gaming Station, Huey, Ingenious Clown, Ice Kyle, Jason Lasky, Jaden, Jay Deus, John Weber, Joke Frog, Justin Sherry, Keegan Too Cool, Keith Myers, Kelvin, Crayden, Crazy Dark Chocolate, Latrix, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Liam, Lawn, Lucas Phoenix, Magical Madman, Markules, Marmato, Maximilian Wolfgang Niver, Milky Moo Official, Michelanius, Mr. Dodongo, Miles Burris, Nito Torpedo, Old Burgle, Old Man Cranberry, Only LK, Pink Peacock, Quasar McDougal, Quillworth, Quinn, Reggie Rodriguez, Ricochet Frame, Sagi Trash, Siren Smells Good, Salty Smasher, Sekai Noah Warida, Seamus Nerd, Shod, Simp God, Special Children, Spooky Grimalkin, Sublime Cataclysm, Super Sandwich Guy, Tenken Zephyrborn, TFY Lex, The Big Bubby, The Salt Knight, They Call Me Gambit, Thrips Heartrop, Travis Edwards, Twiddle Chungus, V01156, Venom, Viewers Like You, Vic, Walter Taggart, Waposa, Weeb Trash, Well Shit, Yay Kundo, Zachary V, Zanasso, Zane the Impure, Zane the Pure, Zed Slayer Gamer, if you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.